after catching a little bit of bad weather, I was on my way to Tokyo and had the most amazing train ride looking at Mount Fuji through the train windows. So before heading to the big city, I decided to spend one day in Hakone, just south of Tokyo, very close to Mount Fuji, very popular tourist destination up in the mountains with a little train that took us up there. So you might hate me for this now. <laughs> But I just have to show you this. I checked into the most amazing place I have probably ever stayed. It was a very traditional Japanese ryokan up in the mountains with futon beds inside the rooms and the most amazing setup with a bar where you can soak your feet in warm water and a private bath, the Japanese call it onsen, which contains hot mineral water from the springs, the volcanic springs up there in the mountain and leaves your skin feeling 20 years younger. Dinner was included and was served in a private space and when they put the menu in front of me, I only then realized that it wasn't the menu, it was actually the list of all the courses of food that they were about to serve. I had a fantastic meal followed by an amazing night of sleep. So I'm very grateful that I treated myself to this very luxurious experience. Fully rested and at least 20 years younger, I then took the next day to go up on Mount Hakone, which had a little cable car train that took us up there and got to enjoy another fantastic view on Mount Fuji from the other side, which was absolutely breathtaking. The whole region still has very high volcanic activity, so you could hear it, smell it, feel it, <laughs> lots of sulfur in the air, and a very fun tradition up there in Mount Hakone are the black eggs which you can buy that are boiled in the sulfur onsen, and as each egg is supposed to add seven years to your life, I got five of them. So now basically 20 years younger and with 35 or more years of life expectancy, I boarded my last Shinkansen to my final destination, Tokyo. A Tokyo tourist day will start early for you if you want to see things and likely at the Tsukichi fish market that trades 2,000 tons of fish daily. It starts very early so you need to be there at around 4.30 in the morning to really get a sense for all the action there and also to make a good spot in the long lines in front of the restaurants there that serve sushi as first thing breakfast in the morning, which were probably the best sushi I've ever had in my whole life. Then off to some more sight running, as I call it. And the best route here is actually around the Imperial Palace that lets you get a great first sight of Tokyo's old and new and also get some of the first of the many steps in that you do in Tokyo as a tourist. Just as in Kyoto, there are temples and shrines literally everywhere throughout the city. The biggest one is Meiji Jingu, um, which is a great shrine in the Shinto tradition. And it happened to be very crowded when I got there. Lots of people taking pictures of 
what I didn't really know what was going on at that point, but I stuck around uh, as you do when something looks interesting and uh, shot a group of people that walked past, looked very important, and only later on I learned that the next sumo master was giving a ceremony in the shrine on that day. If you're into Japanese history, art and culture, the Tokyo National Museum is definitely worth a visit, which has a huge collection of Japanese art and gets you a lot of exposure to samurai swords and uniforms and really lets you travel back in time for a while. Next thing you should definitely make sure to not miss out on is shopping. And there's various different districts in Tokyo where you can absolutely go crazy with this. One is Ginza, which is probably the most luxurious one and closing off their streets on the weekends for a very unique shopping experience without cars. But the next one is one that everyone knows from the Shibuya Crossing, which is the busiest intersection in the world, but also has lots of amazing um, stores to shop in. I spent a fair amount of time at that crossing because it was absolutely crazy. I was there on a weekday, late morning, and it was still so busy that at some point walking over that crossing, I lost direction. People were coming from everywhere, walking everywhere. It was all kind of a huge, big mess, but somehow it all works out. Next definite must-see is Takeshita Dori, which is the center of teen culture in Japan. Lots of little bazaars and shops and tons of sweets to choose from. And then, of course, Harayuku, which is the catwalk of Tokyo and has so many cute little cafes, uh, designer shops, and bars. It was probably my favorite district in the whole city and I really enjoyed spending a full day there. If you need a little break from all the hustle and bustle, Yanaka is a very cute part of the city where locals say that time stopped passing. And it's right next to Ueno Koen, which is a park, very beautiful, with lots of entertainers, cafes, museums, where people of all ages come together and join for great conversations before the evening. Enjoying Tokyo at night is just so impressive because of all the lights that suddenly go on. Most impressive probably in Akihabara, which is the geek center of the town. And just walking through it and taking it in is worth every single minute of it. And then of course, famous Roppongi center of the nightlife. I was lucky enough to be taken by Yuki as one of my former colleagues who really treated me to a very unique dinner and 
bar evening to get to know the city and um, going to spots that I would have never figured out on my own, including Geronimo's, which was an insane bar with a hall of fame um, on the walls. And uh, it was interesting to see the expat culture mix with the local. That was it already. Two weeks Japan. I can't believe how fast it passed. Huge thank you to Yuki and my friend Malte in Germany who with their tips and introductions have really made this visit very special. Stick with me next week. First one in Kuala Lumpur. Thank you guys for watching and see you very soon. Yeah,